Hi, welcome. My name is Charlotte. I love colorful and sparkly makeup. Today I'm going to be duping the vibes of two Odin's Eye palettes, the Stone and Rock palette and the Jewels and Gem palette. To this day, I, I cannot keep straight which is which. I wanted to dupe these palettes in conjunction with each other and try and keep them to one big palette so that I can, you know, mix and match, play with them as I see fit. To do that, I'm, I'm not going to be duping every single shade in the palette. Part of that is because there are some shades that I'm definitely less interested in than other shades. I also really like the idea of using these palettes in conjunction with one another because I think they're pretty great complementary color stories. Full disclosure, I might end up picking up these palettes. I still have not been able to shake my desire for these palettes. Even though I think, as I'll find out, I think I have a lot of these shades. We will see if this exercise helps me hold out <laughs> in the long run. One of the reasons that I'm still so tempted is because of the shade Cheerfulness from the green palette. Um, it's like this perfect sage green that I feel like I've been sort of on the hunt for. I know it's not really worth buying a whole palette just for one shade that I could probably find somewhere as a single. I think the other shades are nice, like I think I'd still get use out of them, but it's that it's that sage green that's really calling my name. So that's not going to be in my dupe palette because I, I know I don't have a, a comparable shade to that. I have a list on my phone of shades that I am thinking about. Like if I, if I close my eyes, don't look at the color stories, there are some shades that stand out to me that I know are dupable within my collection that I want to put in a palette together and see side by side. So I'm not going to go through this in any particular order. I'm not going to go through the palettes. I will keep up for myself like a, a photo of swatches of each of the palettes. Yeah, I don't know. This is a slightly different format from my other palette building videos. So we will, you know, go through it together. Let's see. I'm going to start with my purple palette. There are a few shades in that cooler toned palette that are like these sort of dusty, taupey, um, lilac kind of shades. This one is called Big Fig. It's from the ColourPop Making Mobs palette. And there's another one actually from that same ColourPop palette that I also want to pull. I had this in my um, Mercury Retrograde dupe palette. This is called Big Moves, so I'm going to pull both of those out. I know there are some deeper purples in that palette too, which I'm slightly less interested in. I think that's a pretty good dupe for what what's in that palette. What is that called? Had to be, I think. I'm going to stick with mattes for a minute. From my Mercury Retrograde palette, I'm going to pull this shade, um, Shake It Up. It's a berry. There's like a really beautiful rosewood shade in this cool toned palette. Well, now that I'm looking at it, it's much more vibrant. Uh, but I think I'm going to pull it anyway for now and see how it looks with everything else. While we're on the subject of that shade, I'm going to look into my pink palette. This could be an option for a rosewood shade as well. That's from the Glam Light Chocolate Martini palette. Girls Night Out. And then this one is very similar. I know this is from Lisa Aldridge Vintage Mulberry from the Muse palette. I love that. That's definitely coming out for the palette, although it's a bit warmer. Well, let me pull all of these for now. Then I don't use this one a ton. This is called All Night. Let's just swatch that out. It's a much more cool toned, like, purple. Honestly, I'm going to pull that. I also have similar shades to this in the Nearly Natural palette from Glaminatrix. So let's take a look at these two mauve mattes. Um, this is called Untouched. And then this one is called Naturally. Okay, I don't feel like I need it to go quite this deep. Um, I would sooner pull this one for a little bit of depth. I do like this as like a rosewood shade rather than this, so I think I'm going to actually just pull um, that berry shade out of the mix. I'm going to put that back in its palette and 
I'm gonna keep untouched out. Um, while we're here, I'm gonna check on these matte greens. Um, this is called Down to Earth from Nearly Natural. It's a very brownish, yellowish kind of green. And I have absolutely no shortage of nuanced green mattes. This one is one that I, I feel like is in a lot of Odin's Eye palettes. It's called Corduroy, I, I think. I keep getting the shade name wrong for this shade, but yeah, Corduroy. I think that's pretty close to one of the shades in the green palette. There's a couple deeper gray greens. Um, one looks a little more warm toned and one looks a little more cool toned. I don't feel like I need both of them necessarily. I think this is the shade Pickle from the Beauty Bay Earthy palette. That's a great one. Um, this is also from the Earthy palette. Um, more brown, more gray, and deeper. What shade is this? Hero. Here's a ColourPop version of that brownish one. A little bit more warm. Oh, I'm sorry. The one that I said was Pickle is actually called Eucalyptus, which means that Pickle must be in a different palette. Okay, here is Pickle. Okay, yeah, that's quite a bit brighter. I think I'm liking Eucalyptus best. I think it strikes a bit of a happy medium between some of the shades I'm seeing in the Odin's Eye palette. Come on. And then, because there are some like murky grayish shades, I'm not sure I'll be able to, I, I think I won't be able to keep all of these, but I do want to pull out a couple of Glam Light shades. Um, these are both from the Dirty Martini palette. I think they're like pretty interesting tones. I think they just have that sort of like watery quality. And I think they're interesting. I don't use them enough. So I am going to pull those out too. And to make final decisions, I will probably just choose whichever ones I like best in the context of the color story rather than trying to hit one for one dupes with anything in the palette. And then I do want to pull out this this murky shade cord corduroy. Now in the Jewels and Gem palette, there's like some teal shades. The one I immediately thought of was this shade Troubadour from Lisa Eldridge. I really love this shade. I have a lot of versions of this, which is just kind of like a like a deep mermaidy, seaweedy kind of green. This is my favorite version that I have though, just because I love this formula and it shears out really beautifully, so it's it's very versatile. Now it has also like a lighter version of that color, I want to say. Yeah, I think I can make that a shimmer because I'm just duping the vibes here, remember? So, well, okay, let me pull out this shade here, Chill Factor from the ColourPop Mint to Be palette. Yeah, that's actually honestly probably the closest. I think mint, the Mint to Be shade is like slightly more green and the Odin's Eye shade is slightly more blue. But I mean, I'm not doing a one-for-one one dupe, so that's totally fine. But I am intrigued by what I would get if I put in this shimmer shade instead, or in addition. Um, this is the shade Frost from the Beauty Bay Earthy palette, and I just adore that shade. And I don't know, this is, this is my dupe, so I feel like I can put it in if I want to. I'm skipping some of the like the gray, blue, purple kinds of shades I don't really care for, so I'm not going to add anything to do with that. But for mattes, I think the last one I want to add is a brown matte. This is more for the green palette, the Stone and Rock. Which, side note, I, I've definitely heard somebody say this before, but the palettes have the wrong name. Let's be real. The Stone and Rock palette should be the cool-toned neutral palette, and the 
Jewels and Gems should be the Jewel Toned Green palette. So I think that's why I keep getting confused. But this has like a really yellow brown in it. And it instantly made me think of this shade from the Beauty Bay Earthy palette. I believe this one's called Quicksand. I also have this shade which is called Baked from the Earthy palette. Ooh, I like that. This is from ColourPop You and I from the It's a Mood palette. Then this is an ancient one from ColourPop's from the Zodiac palette with Kathleen Lights. I think this one fits the vibe best of that green palette, but I don't see it being as versatile when I'm pairing it with the shades from the Jewels and Gem palette. So I'm leaning toward one of these guys because I think it'll just like strike a balance between the two palettes. This one's older in my collection and it feels a lot like drier. This one has like a silkier feel. I'm going to go with that one. Uh, both of these uh, palettes have very deep shades verging on black. I have that purple that I pulled. I'm not going to pull a black one right now, um, but maybe I'll pull one in when I make looks with this palette. All right, so that, that does us for the mattes. Let's see where we're at. Yay, I really like this collection. Um, well, sorry, this is a stretch to call this a matte, but so far I think this is getting the vibes. I think this is looking similar to what I would expect to see if I deconstructed those palettes and smushed them together. Uh, I'll probably not have room for all of these. I think there's some redundancy as well. But so far, just looking at that, I am feeling it, and I do like them together, which is really fun to see. Okay, now this is the fun part. Um, I have so many shimmers in mind for this palette. Let's see, where to begin? Um, this is the shade Mystic Moon Pie from Davina. There is a shade similar to this in the palette, like a blue-brown kind of... Um, plummy, teal, you know, that family of shade. Um, so I'm gonna definitely want to include this one. There's also like a kind of taupey uh, brown shade in one of the palettes, and I feel like this shade Tomback is probably the closest I have to it. It's from Glam Shop. I'm gonna pull that out. I may or may not include this, but this is from the Glamlight Ghost Face palette. Both of the Odin's Eye palettes have a shimmery black. And while I don't use this shade that often, I am attracted to shimmery, sparkly blacks. This one is definitely not the most intense sparkle out there. I feel like it's probably pretty close to the one in the Jewels and Gem palette. Um, oh no, I think it's the Stone and Rock palette actually that has like more of a satiny black. Um, I'm going to pull it out for now, but I I'll definitely boot this first if I run out of room. I'm just planning on sticking this in like sort of the biggest empty palette that I have. Actually, while I'm on the subject of uh, that taupe shade, oh I'm not on that subject anymore am I, but <laughs> before I get too far from that subject. There's also this shade Vengeful Spirit from the Glamlight Ghost Face palette. I really, really love this shade. It's like the um, the average of Tomback. But Tomback is like a kind of purple base with a gold sheen. Vengeful Spirit. I mean, I guess the base on it is similar. It doesn't have that gold shimmer. But it feels to me sort of like if the gold and the purple in Tomback were sort of averaged to one color. So I'll keep that out and just see which one feels better along with everything else. And actually one more shade I should swatch in this category is the shade Mushroom from Glam Shop, which is much more like satin and less sparkly. Other than that, it's very similar to Vengeful Spirit, but I do like Vengeful Spirit better because it has the sparkle, so. So, my camera just stopped recording. I don't exactly know when it stopped, but um, yeah, I think this shade is similar to one in the Jewels and Gem palette. This is similar to one in the Stone and Rock. I'm going to pull both of them out for now. This is Drip from Luxie. 
And this is, I, I believe this is the shade High Class from the Glam Light Dirty Martini palette. It's embarrassing, but I still haven't fucking labeled those shades. I feel like I keep saying that in like every video. I keep pulling this shade out for BYOPs, but this is just a splash from the Glam Light Dirty Martini palette. I thought maybe there would be a place for this. I think it's, it's the, this shade is the one I'm thinking of, and I think this is more yellow than I want, actually. All right, there's some beautiful inner corner shade, topper shade, transformer shade type shadows in this um, collection. And that, you know, if I'm honest, is one of the things that attracts me to the palette. So I would definitely be happy to have those shades. But I have a lot of similar ones in my collection too. A lot of them are like really subtle, like silvery blue white kinds of shades. I think... One of my best bets for this kind of shade is going to be Salted Caramel from Luxy. There is also like a silvery grayish green in this Jewels and Gems palette that could be similar to Satellite from the Beauty Bay Earthy palette. I'm going to pull it out and I might bump it if there's not room. I don't have a an iridescent multi-chrome that does the green to orange shift. They have one of these in the Jewels and Gem palette, similar to the one that they had in the Merry Christmas palette, I feel like. But I think the closest thing I will have to that is Verdigris from Shine by SD. It's not exactly a topper because it has this gray base, but I think it will go well with the other stuff I have, and actually it could be sort of a replacement for Satellite if I don't have room. I think this sort of does some of some of the same work as Satellite. When it comes to that sage green, by the way, uh, this is Phone Home, and it's more of a spring green. I don't think it really, it doesn't have that mutedness, that earthiness that I think the Odin's Eye shade Cheerfulness has. Again, one of the shades that really attracts me to this palette. I also wanted to swatch Earthshine from Divina. I got this hoping it would be that kind of sage green, but it's very much, it's much more blue, much more minty than the sort of warm gray green that I was hoping for. So I'm gonna leave both of those out. Sorry, back to some toppers. Angel Wings is an obvious choice. I feel like these palettes in the Odin's Eye collection have a lot of those just sort of indescribable shades. Angel Wings is the first one in my collection that I think of. You can see here it's like kind of rose gold, kind of green, kind of teal, kind of blue, kind of gold. <laughs> it's really hard to pin down, but it's very, very beautiful. Um, I also want to include the shade Ray from the Beauty Bay Earthy palette. It's just a beautiful iridescent green. It's got a warmth to it. Um, if there's not a shade like this in the Odin's Eye palettes, there should be, so I'm definitely taking that out. So there is like a, one of those kind of dark based multi-chromes, those like scarab beetle colors that shifts from blue to green, or from green to blue, I guess. It's more of a, a green that predominates. For this, I have two possibilities. This is Moss from the Earthy palette from Beauty Bay. It's not a multi-chrome by any stretch, but it does have sort of a duochromatic kind of shift, um, or at least it has sort of a bluish teal base with a very bright emerald green uh, shimmer. That's one option. And then the other option is Dragon Slayer from Luxy. This is one of my favorite shades, but I have not used it nearly enough. And that has a similar bright green, slightly less vibrant, like slightly less grassy. And it has a deeper base that almost goes a little bit purple, actually. 
So, and because of the high contrast on that shade, I think it just gives more of a shifty vibe, even though I also wouldn't describe that as a multi-chrome. So I'm going to pull out Dragon Slayer for this slot. Okay, now I'm just going back to my list that I had on my phone, and there's a couple of shades I didn't think of, so apologies for the kind of chaotic ordering here. Um, but there's a few more like kind of gold adjacent shades I want to pull out. One of them is Social Butterfly from Luxie, it is sort of like a coppery kind of gold. It's got a very bright yellow gold shimmer and kind of a coppery rose gold base. Really, really beautiful high shine shade. Although it's definitely, definitely a warm toned shade. So we'll see how it goes with everything else. I believe there's also a shade that's described sort of as a silvery gold. And so for that, I thought of the shade Palm from the Beauty Bay Earthy Palette. It's a cool toned gold shade. I believe it's this one. I think that would go just beautifully with those rosy, mauvey, cool tones in the Jewels and Gem palette. There's nothing at all, like, shifty about that shade. It's just, I find it's a really interesting undertone for a gold. So I'm pulling that out. And then, finally, I have one more topper that I want to pull out. And this is one that's very dear to my heart. This is Mercurial from the Lisa Eldridge Sorcery Palette. Just a gorgeous, sparkly green topper with a very sheer, purpley, mauve kind of base. And just so, sort of for my own info, I want to swatch that beside Ray. I think they have slightly different green shimmers on top. I think I would describe Ray as like a little bit more of a golden yellow green. The shimmer on top of Mercurial is like a little bit more of a spring grassy kind of green. But they're both so sparkly, so pretty on the eyes, and I'm, I'm keeping them both for now. And actually pulling this palette back out made me realize that this shade might have a place in the palette. Let me... Yeah, I think that one's called Madrigal. And I want to swatch it next to the olive that I pulled for this palette, which is called High Class. Madrigal has a very deep base, and it's sort of gray. Um, one thing to note for when it comes to my own preferences and um, what preferences are informing this palette, I do not like gray tones on my skin. I've been finding that more and more as sort of desaturated tones I feel like are having a bit of a moment right now, and I find that my complexion, I think it must just have a little bit more vibrancy and more contrast naturally. And so I really, when something has a gray base, it really looks very lackluster on my skin. And I find, unfortunately, that's the case with this Lisa Eldridge shade. When you compare it to something like this high class shade, they have very similar um, reflects. But the base on high class is just much more green, much more true and, and less grayed out. So in practice, I think high class is more what I will be looking for, what will look nice on my eyes. That said, I'm tempted to pull in Madrigal just because there's so much gray in this color story and I think it would look really nice with everything. So I think I'm gonna do that actually. And then if I find that I don't like this on my eye, I'll just replace it with high class just, you know, for my own usage, but for the purposes of the palette. All right, let's see where we are. Ah, I love this color story altogether. I think it's gorgeous for March. It's gorgeous for spring. Okay, I think I have like somewhere around 30, 31, 32 shades. So um, I should be able to fit them into one of my magnetic palettes without too many eliminations. But I can tell you off the bat, I'm going to eliminate a couple of what I feel like are duplicate shades. So we talked about Vengeful Spirit and Tombak. I think because there's a lot of like golden tones, 
I want that gold shimmer that's on top of Tombak, so I'm going to get rid of Vengeful Spirit. I know I have a lot of the sort of mulberry rosewood type tones in here, and I'm pretty sure I don't need all of them. Okay, as much as I love this Lisa Eldred shade, I think it is a little bit warmer toned than any of the mauves in the Odin's Eye collection, so I'm thinking I'm going to lean towards uh, kicking that out. I think I kind of want to keep all the others. I don't love this shade in and of itself, but it would be nice to have a reason to use it more, and I think it could do nice things with these mauves as well as um, these rosewood kind of tones. Since I might have room for it, I think I am just going to pull out my go-to matte black, which is the shade Hex from the Beauty Bay Midnight Palette right here. Just a very basic matte black. Why not? I don't know. I'm also thinking about all these matte greens I have. I kind of want to compare them to each other again. I do like having the gradient from warm to cool. I don't think I have anything quite as gray as some of the shades in the Stone and Rock palette, but given what I just said about my coloring, I'm not sure that that's a bad thing actually. I guess if I have a couple of spaces left, maybe the best thing to do is to bring in a couple of browns. Um, those transition tones that sort of go lighter than this one. So for example, I have this shade Bittersweet from the Chocolate Martini palette. I have my go-to cool toned shade called Nothing to See from the Nearly Natural palette. Yeah, that would be really good to have, um, especially if I want to uh, blend out a grayer uh, colorful tone like this mint green for example. I'm gonna pull out nothing to see Cool, I'm very happy with how this is looking so far. I've decided I want to try and include this shade exposed From the Gla Glaminatrix nearly natural palette because there are some like really sheer shimmery greens that um, are sort of similar to Ray in the Odin's eye palettes that also kind of give me similar vibes to this one I know I get carried away with this swatching, but I just quickly want to see how this compares to Exposed. So this is Ray. Um, okay, more vibrant, definitely like more, I don't know, shifty isn't the right word, but it has like a contrasting base on it. Um, but Exposed is a really beautiful sparkly shade, so I might go ahead and, and put both in if I can. Okay, there's, there's one more shade I came across as I was emptying out this magnetic palette. This is the shade Ferric from Cleona. And actually, this is so perfect for this palette because it shifts from like a rosy color to like a greenish color and it passes through that sort of golden silvery kind of shade. And it has like a grayish kind of base and it's just like, it's really marrying a lot of the things that all the other shades are trying to do. So I definitely want to pull this out and use this. And I'm going to be probably needing to replace um, something like Satellite or Verdigris uh, when, I, when I do that, which is fine. For comparison, here's Verdigris. So you can see they have something in common. They have the sort of pink to green, but very muted. Okay, I gave this palette a sorely needed spritz with some alcohol. It's not perfect, but it's still like magical what alcohol will do to makeup packaging. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and arrange these. And I'm thinking no particular order, like I'm not going to group similar shades together. I want to just be able to like kind of wander freely among the shades. Um, not necessarily have to choose a particular shade to fulfill a particular role in a look. And I also definitely don't want to split them up by palette because I want to have the marriage of these two color stories into one.
I have run out of room. Okay, I think these three shades are similar enough that it's this one I don't need. I think this one is sitting between these two and I can get by with just these ends of that spectrum. So I'm going to get rid of this shade Girls Night Out and make room for uh, Exposed. So maybe I'll put it right here. As cool as it would be to have this deeper, uh, this shimmery black. I don't know, the question is do I want this instead of the actual matte black? I think I do. I think, I, I mean, I can pull this in if I want to from home palette. That's, that's fine. Um, I'm going to replace it with the shimmery one. And now I can choose either verdigris or satellite. I don't know, I, I should be getting to know Verdigris better because, like I said, with that grayness that exists in this shade, I find this never does quite what I expect it to on my lids, and then I end up not reaching for it because I, I don't really know how to use it, whereas I, I do use and love Satellite. I kind of would prefer to put Satellite in the palette, but I think I'm going to put Verdigris in so that I can get to know it a little bit better, and if it's really not working out for me, I can always replace it with satellite later. So here is the palette swatched. I usually try not to swatch over my tattoo there, but this is a hefty, hefty boy. I might even need to uh, zoom you out a little bit to see. 30 shades. Um, there's obviously redundancies, which uh, the swatch has even brought out some of the similar shades are sitting right next to each other. But that's okay, actually, because, you know, I mean, this channel is is a, a diary of my own my own process, and so I, I know this isn't a perfect palette, and it wouldn't work for everybody, but for myself, I just kind of want to have the shades that make me think of this palette. I want to have them together, and experiment and play around so like maybe it'll turn out that these two shades have the same function but I don't really know that yet and I want to be able to try both um like we'll see how many looks I actually make with this but right now I'm feeling very inspired um I did make one substitution I brought this matte black back because um this shade pickle I'm pretty sure unless I said otherwise I didn't want this in the palette, it just snuck in uh, to the wrong piles for whatever reason, so pulled that out. It's a little bit more vibrant than I wanted and I had a lot of matte greens, so I don't think that will be missed. But other than that, I really love this color story. I'm super happy with how it came out. I'll make sure to uh, take some footage of, of these swatches um, in the sunlight so that you can see some of the sparkle and the shifts. So that is my attempt to dupe the vibes of the Odin's Eye Jewels and Gem and Stone and Rock palettes all in this one magnetic palette and I hope it's inspiring to you. If you have these palettes, pull them out. Um, I think they'll be really fun to play with for the month of March and this time as we're going into spring. Thank you for joining me during this time. I hope that you will subscribe to my channel if you're interested in this kind of content and I hope that I will see you back for future videos. Bye!